Hello guys, welcome back. Um, we're gonna, we are gonna rehouse our Fistilla Horrida, the giant spiny assassin bug. Now, these are proving to be an absolute nightmare and I can't seem to get to grips with them. Now they're supposedly fairly easy to keep and supposedly really easy to breed. But do you think I can breed them? Not a hope in hell. So, I have tried all sorts of different things and it's just not working. So we're gonna try something else. And this is all part of the hobby. We need to live and learn and try things. If it doesn't work, scrap it, try something else. If that doesn't work, we scrap it. Then we start asking everybody else, how do you do it? So. I've always been a fond believer in doing things my own way, but it obviously isn't working. So I got in touch with uh, Steve Thornton from um, tar oh, Tarantula Tastic Enclosures. Check his channel out, it's absolutely amazing. But what Steve has done, is he has actually mastered the art of breeding these little guys. So I've been in contact with him, and he says to do it a different way to what I've been doing it, do them in a bit more of a terrestrial type of setup and uh, so this is what we're going to do today and we are hopefully going to master it like Steve has so what we're going to do we're going to put them in this 30 30 we've got all our stuff here I've got some dry beastie substrate because by all accounts these guys like it really dry um, but they need somewhere damp to lay their eggs. So what I'm gonna do, I've got some very dry substrate here, which has been allowed to, to dry right out. We've got some nice piece of oak bark here. This is wild oak that I've, I've pulled from the wild. Uh, perfectly safe. Don't panic guys, it's fine. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna put that in the back which will allow these guys to actually get behind it should they want to and then what i'm going to do i'm going to do something a little bit different this is another idea that i'm going to incorporate as well we're going to use a cricket tub now by all accounts the adults like it nice and dry but they do need that damp substrate so what i thought was i was going to do this with the lid off but then obviously we're gonna get it drying out, which means it's gonna be a bit of a nuisance because I'm gonna to have to keep topping it up, hopefully when they start laying their eggs on in this substrate. Um, I don't wanna to have to keep mucking around with it too much. So what I thought was, I'll keep the lid on it, but we'll cut a little hole in the side to allow the little guys to get in there and do their stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, luckily with a cricket box, they have got air holes already in them. So we can use them to cut our, our line. Um, I guess we go down there. This is all a bit of an experiment. I honestly don't know if this is gonna work, but it's worth a try. Because when you're getting nowhere, anything is worth a try. As you can see now, we're going to we cut that out like so. Now I'm pretty sure even my largest assassin bug will be able to crawl through there. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to top that up with some potting compost. Put it over here so we don't make a mess. Now what I'm hoping is this will give them the uh, the right environment for them to lay their eggs. That's the plan. So there we go, simple thing. We'll put our lid back on. It doesn't look very pretty, does it? But hopefully it'll, it'll do the job. We've got our hole here. 
hopefully they'll get in there. This will stay reasonably moist. We won't have to keep such a massive check on it. I'm just going to place that in there like so. And we're going to top up with some more dry beastie substrate. Put that all through there like so. Leaving that gap open. I hope they can find their way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add some cork bark underneath. On sorry, on top of the substrate like this. This will give them somewhere to hide as well. do is pin this piece of oak to the back so that it can't fall over. You can do that with that. Um, this is literally just to give them a little bit of climbing should they need it. And it gives them more actual room space if you like. Right, I think I think that looks fairly good. We might have to rearrange this um, this cricket tub because it doesn't look very pretty, does it? So I think we're going to have to have a little think about that and see if what we can come up with some idea and uh, change that so that it looks a little bit more in keeping. You don't find many cricket tubs hiding in the wild, do you? Right then, let's see how many we've actually got in here. sure we've got nothing in the lid as you can see in this in this setup here I did try and use some cork tubes you guys know I don't like cork tubes I did try and use them because I thought that would give them somewhere dark to hide and also for young to be able to disappear and hide in there as well but it's not really working and as you can see inside here, they are messy things. Look at all the carcasses in the bottom. They do have a very, very healthy appetite. But as you can see, the way this is set up, I don't really get to come in and have a look and see what's what um, very often. Mm, that's not a very good sign, is it? We've got quite a bit of a spider web going on in there. Oh wow, there's a baby. Mm. Right, okay. Let's have a little, hang on a minute. You look in there and have a look at them. There's one making a run for it now, that's an adult. Okay, what we are going to do if we have any babies, I think we can um, house them separately. Because the babies actually like it really dry. So then. Let's see what we've got going on. Where did that little fella go? Any ideas? I mean, you can't see in there, can you? I'll tell you what, we're going to leave that there for a moment. So we look up here. Have a little look, see if we've got anything on the outside. Nothing. There's our torch. Have a look on the inside. Oh, there, there is a baby. There is a baby. This is going to be fun. I think he's going to come out the bottom. Maybe.
No, he's coming out the top. There he is. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Man. Steve, what do you do with your babies? Did he fall out? Yes, he's in there. Oh, blimey. It's always the tiny things that give you us. so much trouble. There he is. You see that? No. There, in the bottom. I see. Come on, camera lady. Now that's a little baby nymph. He ran rings around you. He did, didn't he? He did. Right. Let's see what else we've got. Um. Devils, these are, aren't they? Right then, let's see what we got here. Now, this is an adult. Now, these are capable of squirting a pretty foul um, excrement at you as, an, as a defence. And they've also got quite a potent venom. So it's probably not advisable to handle these. I have had the odd one crawl over on my hand and things, but I don't think it's probably a very good idea. You don't really want to get bitten if you don't need to. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna see who else we've got. Oh wow, look at them all. Here's all our adults. They look stunning. Fabulous looking things. Let's see if we can get them off now without. One. Oh, go down there. There's three in there. They climb back on the other side. There we go. Is that five? Yep, five. This is the thing when you keep things communally, you never quite know how many you got. There's another one on the inside. Let's see if we can't push him out. There we go. Right, that's six. We'll have a quick look, see if we've got any babies on the inside, which there doesn't appear to be. And we've got no little nymphs on the outside. Right, that's a clear one. So let's see what we've got in this one. Oh, I can see a little nymph straight away. Which has disappeared straight away. There's another adult. With a nymph. Oh, the nymph's gone in there as well. How many have we got in here now? Six. Are you sure? I thought you were seven. Oh, there's more in here. There's still more. There's more. Here we go. Here they come. They really are tricky little things. Right. You keeping count? 
No. Oh, there's another one in here. You got it. Oh, well, you yeah. <laughs> They're fun if nothing else. Right. Oh, there's a little baby there. So. There you go, here, oh. Yeah. He's in. Right then. So we have actually, we've had some success then. Um, but not a huge amount. There's another one there. Oh, we've got two more adults here as well. Come on, you. Really are tricky little things, aren't they? I'm going to have to revert to picking you up in a minute. Come on. I see there, that shocked him, didn't it? All right. He's in there. Right, I think what we will do is we will have a trawl through this now for some babies. And we will see what we get. There's one there. So it would appear that we've had some minimal success, but not as good as we should be getting. So, We've changed it all over and we've now gone over to this much, much drier system and hopefully we'll get some stuff come back. Now these guys have a really broad range in terms of um, habitat in which they will put up with. But that being said, there obviously seems to be, there needs to be an optimum to, to breed them, to get them to actually breed sustainably. So hopefully now this will change we've got a couple of little nymphs in here so that's good news um temperature wise we want to keep these guys between the sort of um mid 70s to just over 80 up to maybe 85 at the top that's that's about as warm as you want to be going as far as i understand um in here it's 80 degrees and they seem to do fine survival wise they live fine they're really good they do have big appetites and I think this is one of the things maybe where I've gone a little bit wrong, or perhaps I should need to give them more food. So within this enclosure, the idea is, this is an escape-proof escape, escape -proof enclosure. I can put roaches in here and they never get out. So the idea I'm gonna do now is to keep it permanently with food running around in here. So hopefully, whenever they want a snack, it's there for them. And a bit of luck, this will keep them going. And then with the damp substrate, we can uh, hopefully get some eggs. Right, well, we're going to sift through all that rubbish and see if we can find a few more babies. And uh, we will have an update on these and see how they're getting on in perhaps a month or so's time. And a bit of luck will be successful. All right, what we've done now is we've, we've jumped forward a week and we're going to have this bit of a feeding clip as you can see there, we um, literally just pour the roaches in. And you'll see these guys are absolutely ferocious hunters. They'll tackle each other, they'll fight over their food. You notice how they're all working on site. Now these will feed communally, by which I mean they will all actually share the same prey item. 
Now in their bid for food they'll quite often end up just in a big tussle, the food will get away and they'll still end up rolling around fighting each other. As you can see now, that one's grabbed some and someone's grabbed him. There's plenty of food in here. Here we go. We've got three there on one roach. And as you can see, they just all keep piling in. They're very, very entertaining when it comes to food time. Dinner time is just one big ambush. Here we go. Look at that. Nowhere safe. see the beauty in their markings. The coloration on these guys is just phenomenal. And this is there primarily to um, to warm birds that they're not particularly very nice tasting themselves and to be left well alone. You can see the turn of speed these guys have very very quick and they are fearless. Look at them all. Absolutely fearless. And you can see there the, um, the instrument in which they impale their food. Almost like a spear. And they're all coming down now. Look at that, there's three there hanging off of one another. The amount of food that has gone into this tank, and yet they still insist on all wanting the same one. Beautiful creatures. There you go, he's got one of his own. You need to hang on to that, my friend. You can see the, the spines sticking out of their carapaces there, out of their backs. It's where they get their name from. Spiny assassin bug. truly are assassins. I think they're slowly all getting one each. He's got the right idea. Catch it, run away and hide with it. Lovely close-ups now. Look at that. Now they have been using their box. I'm not sure if we've got any eggs in there yet. They have been using it and I have seen them copulating. So fingers crossed we shall have babies on their way. Such cool creatures. Very, very cool. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. And um, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. And even your assassin bugs, if you can breed them. <laughs> All right. See you soon, guys.